Prior to the OnePlus 8T, the last proper high-end OnePlus device I tried was practically a year ago with the OnePlus 7T Pro. That meant that I had a fresher slate and a frame of mind when compiling this review and I feel that the decision to not launch a T version of the 8T Pro is the right one. This is Sandi from Rev Atlas and let me explain why. Before we get this started, please do make sure to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications to avoid missing any videos from us in the future. Now let's begin the video. <music> The OnePlus 7T looked and felt like a completely different device compared to the 7 that came just a few months before it. In fact, the 7 and 6T felt more similar than the 7 and 7T and this really helped people who bought the 7 as they didn't feel as disappointed with their phone when the 7T came out as people generally did when the T variants came out. But more importantly, for the first time ever, it was a T-series phone that didn't feel like a half-hearted effort just to boost sales by bumping up the internal satad bit. The 8T follows the 7T that way and the design itself is different compared to the OnePlus 8. It approaches the design differently by giving you a flat front and is to the OnePlus 8 what the 10T Pro is to the Mi 10. The 8T footprint is a tad bit larger owing to the flatter display up front which makes it a bit wider and a tad bit taller. The waistline is also larger by almost half a millimeter owing to the 200mAh larger battery but you don't notice it and you also don't notice the extra 8 grams of weight either thanks to the good weight distribution. I found the 7 Pro and 7T Pro devices to be too top heavy, probably owing to their pop-up cameras but the 8T feels very well balanced and doesn't cause fatigue even after extended duration of use. I love 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 this colour and is such eye candy and practically stands out no matter where you are. Also to be honest, even the silver variant looks pretty good and I doubt anyone is going to contest whether this is a looker or not. My only gripe is the not so good or rather non-unique camera module that feels like it was taken from the Realme cam. They could have used the OnePlus 70 module and tweaked it a bit instead. Speaking of which, you get a quad camera setup that is largely similar to the 8 but with an added 2 megapixel depth sensor which is practically useless. But don't worry, there are more changes, just that it isn't immediately visible physically speaking. You get a higher resolution macro camera, a wider aperture for the primary camera and most importantly a wider ultra wide angle camera. These changes do result in visibly better images and output, however, I'm still a believer that OnePlus can achieve much more if they're willing to rethink the image processing as that is still the Achilles heel of OnePlus devices. They have come a long way but if you were to put the OnePlus images next to most other flagships, you still see where they go wrong. Stay tuned for a detailed camera review but these samples will let you know what to expect. Due to the outrage on the internet on Oxygen OS 11, I actually expected the software experience to be horrible but to be honest, I found it to be pretty good and in fact lesser bugs than before. The 7 series had quite a lot of bugs and instability and in comparison the Oxygen OS 11 atop Android 11 worked very well and was perfectly stable. Visually speaking, yes, it does look a bit more crowded than before but I didn't really find it to be a deal breaker or a major issue like I've read online from folks who have tried it earlier. Under the hood is a Snapdragon 865 and while there isn't a plus variant chipset like they usually do on the T variants, let's be honest there really isn't anything that the A65 can't do which the A65 plus can. It still is plenty more than enough for practically everything you need to do on the AT be it for gaming, multitasking or video editing for example. 8128 and 12256 with UFS 3.1 is what you get and unless you are a power user I reckon the 8 gig version is plenty enough and the actual reason to go for the top SKU is mainly to get the extra storage and not for the extra amount of RAM. The in-display fingerprint scanner is quick and accurate and is one of the best implementations that we have seen in terms of speed as well. The display is a 6.55 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED unit with 120Hz refresh rate and Corning Gorilla Glass 5 which you also get on the back. I'm actually indifferent about curved and flat screens as long as they're made well. 
But what I really love about the OnePlus 8T are the smaller bezels and especially the smaller chin which like on iPhones is very small thanks to the chip on panel design that bends back below the display and the screen looks quite impressive and immersive as a result especially with the display corner in the upper left corner which is the least intrusive position for a camera cutout. Display is great in terms of sharpness, color and legibility regardless of the environment that you're in although the glass is a bit reflective. The screen refresh rate can be chosen in either 60 or 120Hz options but funnily enough there isn't an auto or 90Hz option, the latter of which would have been useful especially for folks who want the higher refresh rate option but want to get slightly better battery life as well. The OnePlus 8T can charge from a fully flat battery to 100% in less than 40 minutes and to be honest in most cases you can actually charge it in less than 30 minutes especially if you are like me and you charge it around the 15% mark usually. The phone really changes the way you charge your smartphone and I'm usually someone who charges their device overnight but the 80 as well as other 65 watt charging devices give me the confidence to go to bed without charging and just plug it in after waking up since I know I can get enough juice to last an entire day within no time. There's no overheating as the cells are split into two and the charger handles the monitoring of thermals as well. For a long time OnePlus, especially in India, made the fastest charging smartphones so it's good to see that they've now reclaimed the title along with their sister brands Realme and Oppo. In terms of battery life, you get in and around 6 hours of screen on time which is decent but not great. However, do remember that it has 120Hz display and the fast charging does make a big difference as well. The formula for the OnePlus T devices is something that OnePlus took time to perfect. Initially, it was basically an update to the regular device that came out earlier the same year, but that didn't cut it. It was with the OnePlus 70 that they really nailed it by offering something completely different to the coffee-loving other models. And to me, the OnePlus 70 is their best device till date apart from the OG OnePlus One. And while the 80 isn't as good, it still is a device that you really cannot dislike. And in fact, I love it. And this is in spite of me still finding traits of soft power image processing. That is the reason why I haven't used the OnePlus device as a personal daily driver in so long time. But that's just because in so many other aspects, be it the screen, the software, the charging speed, the performance, the audio and design, it does so well that it makes you want to forgive its smaller, fewer shortcomings. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section below. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you again in the next one.